New technologies are transforming the way we plan, design, build, and operate transportation systems. Transport agencies use technology to count traffic, collect tolls and fares, manage operations, and operate synchronized traffic signals. For travelers, we depend on traffic reports, electronic signs, real-time arrival and departure information, and a lot of other services that did not exist a generation ago. Join us today as we discuss the emerging technology in transport applications on our episode on taxation, traffic, and technology. I am Dr. Victor B. Endriga, and this is Tax TV, a taxpayer's guide to Philippine taxation. Traffic and population growth demand for more transportation infrastructures, but the government doesn't have sufficient revenues or space to build more roads and rails. Transportation facilities in our country are relatively underdeveloped, partly due to the country's mountainous areas and scattered islands. And the government's persistent underinvestment in transport infrastructures. With the country's problematic public transport system, many travelers have turned to ride-sharing applications to ease their daily commute. There is no question that our government has been helpless in the last few years to ease traffic congestions in the metropolis. It is costly to the individuals and to the society itself. It results to the loss of productive hours, wasted fuels, and adverse health effect, which is the stress in driving. The Philippines remains to be one of the worst countries to drive in. Cebu City is the most miserable urban center for the motorists, and Metro Manila has the worst traffic on earth. This was the verdict of the 2016 Global Driver Satisfaction Survey of Navigation Application Waze, which asked millions of Waze users in 38 countries and 186 metropolitan cities about their driving experience. New technologies can disrupt established ways of doing things, and so technology development may need to be complemented. This is what's happening in our country. Instead of welcoming the entry of transport applications in our system, the operators, owners, and drivers of taxis and public utility vehicles are threatened to their existence and branded the newcomer not only as a direct competitor, but an enemy as well. We must therefore apply technology in traffic congestions in the metropolis the noble way. This is Tax TV. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Technology will help optimize roadway utilization, potentially saving billions in people's tax money. On-road communications will dramatically change how vehicles operate and provide services and information. Uber Technologies Incorporated is an American multinational online transportation network company based in San Francisco, USA. It develops and operates the Uber mobile applications, which allows consumers with smartphones to request a trip, which the software program automatically sends to the Uber driver nearest, and alerting the driver to the location of the customer. Uber is now operating in 66 countries, 
and more than 500 cities worldwide, including the Philippines. Grabcar is Southeast Asia's leading ride-sharing platform. It helped solve critical transportation challenges and made transport freedom a reality for 600 million people in Southeast Asia possible. It operates in 30 cities in Singapore, Malaysia, Indonesia, Thailand, Vietnam, and the Philippines. UHAP is an all-Filipino investor's transport application. UHAP aims to resolve the current struggle in commuting by providing travelers interconnected shuttle service globally. It aims to lessen the traffic volume by utilizing shuttle vans, thus limiting private vehicles on the road. By using UHAP, travelers are maximizing the whole seats in the van. Unlike others, which only allows less commuters to occupy the vehicles, thus making traffic worse. UHAP utilizes the services of minivans, SUVs, and minibus operators. The transport company creates opportunities for operators and drivers as well. UHAP built to provide solutions to traffic congestions. The Land Transportation Franchising and Regulatory Board or the LTFRB is the national government agency responsible for promulgating, administering, enforcing, and monitoring compliance of policies, laws, and regulations of public transport services. This is the agency that issues Certificate of Public Convenience or permits authorizing the operation of public land transport services provided by motorized vehicles. The agency is currently headed by its chairman, Martin Delgrad III. LTFRB issued Memorandum Circular 2016-008 last July 21, 2016, directing its regional offices not to accept any application for TNVS or Transport Network Vehicle Services, particularly from the three transport application networks. As a result, there are now more than 30,000 pending applications for TNVS. This is a sad day for the commuting public. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. We have invited Ms. Arlene Cabangon, Vice President for Technology of UHAP, Transport Network Vehicle Systems, to share with us the vision and mission of their company. Now, uh, UHAP is a new, new name in the transport industry. Could you say something or more about this? Uh, because write me, this is the first time I heard this name. So could you uh, yeah. sell more about this yeah. UHAP? Sir, you have, uh, the, you have the word itself, uh, our vision is to have an option for a commuting public to hop on. Basically, hop on the world. Uh -huh. You hop in, you hop out. Uh -huh. So that's why it's you hop. Um, it's an all Filipino company. It's recently uh, registered here in Philippines. Um, our primary objective is to provide something better than what is best now. Uh, basically, it's a change, continuous change uh, to provide a technology, a better technology. Uh, one of the vision that we have is to provide a uh, um, better transportation system, safe and convenient, and uh, cost-effective. Uh -huh. That's the key word, uh, because if we support one to one, uh, rather see, than uh, ones to many, uh, yeah, it's, it's yeah, definitely yeah, yeah. If, you, if many people divide 
uh, sh uh, the fare. It's, yeah. it's much cheaper. Yeah, of course. Yep. So since you have is already operational right now, could you say something about how much more or less would be the uh, payment to be made in a point to point? Okay. Uh, first, sir, uh, before they can they can uh, um, have our service. Um, members needs to register or the end user need to register first to ah, our so, website. Uh, yeah. this, uh, this the card that uh, you're using? Yeah, so, so basically they need to register. Uh, we, will, we will KYC them if they are actually a valid user. Then we will provide a membership card to them. It's something different to other other ah. providers. We are the only one who, who provides So the membership, membership card. card is free of charge? Membership card is free of charge. Uh -huh. We are providing so them. So the card, you could get that at free? Yep. So once, once they are activated, we will provide them the card. Then they can avail our service. Um, again, our pilot service is shuttle. Yeah. Normally, we charge them. Uh, actually, we offer a one week or monthly pass for our shuttle, uh -huh. uh, which is way, way, way better than, than, than other services. Because once you enroll or subscribe for one month or one week, you have... A confirm seats for one week or one month, depending ah, on the subscription. That, confirm that, seat, huh? Yeah, definitely. Just like uh, riding in a plane. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. You have a confirm seat. So, uh, once we assign a confirm seat, uh, normally if, if the shuttle has 15 maximum seating capacity, yeah. we will allow only 14 passengers plus one uh -huh. for the driver. <laughs> we, we, we don't utilize more than the number of seating capacity as specify the month by so the month there's factors. no standing room here there's no the standing room there's no so standing you room. are guaranteed the pay seat <laughs> there is a guaranteed seat yep. uh -huh. the the charges normally uh it's 5.99 for, for one week so it's it's almost 99 pesos per day per ride. round trip ah, round trip round already trip. round trip so usually from where to where? More uh, or less. Normally, it's up to 10 kilometers. We normally uh, up adjust Up to 10 it. kilometers. So yeah. 10 kilometers, you just have to pay around... 99 than, pesos round trip. Yeah. Uh, round, round trip. trip. Less than so 100. you have a confirmed seat going uh, from home, going to office, and a confirmed seat also from office to home. So it should be less than 5, so that when you go back, it's already 10. <laughs> yeah. uh, now, if you go outside of the 10 kilometer radius, uh, how much would that we, we have minimal, minimal, minimal charges. That, add on. Uh, add on. But again, that is being uh, divided to to the passengers. Uh, yeah. Because really, this I you have is really something that uh, I think the people should hmm. know hmm. and try to use their services because yeah. there are so many services. Yeah. By the way, sir, as I mentioned, right, we have shuttle service, which is a weekly and monthly pass, uh, which we normally offer to corporate. Uh -huh. uh, even corporate can, can onboard to us if they want to offer, um, uh, let's say, benefit, transportation yeah. benefits, or they want to subscribe. We can also cater for that. Another service we have is the car on demand. Car on demand is basically similar to the two TNC accredited uh, operators here or company. Uh -huh. uh, but the difference we have is we don't charge surcharge. Ah. So if it's peak hours and it's very difficult for you to to to, to get, get a car, a car um, once we assign, if you book, once you as, once we assign you the car, we don't charge search search. Uh, so how, there's no uh, time is two times three times uh, four times five. Because sometimes you're caught in the traffic yeah. and then the, the traffic is not moving, uh, so some charge more. Is yeah, it? normally, no, the yeah, normally the the existing two car hailing companies here in Philippines. They charge surcharge, so if if it's normally five to six, sometimes yeah. it's even midnight. They charge, uh, they charge surcharge uh, up to charge. time is five. Ah, yeah, one, time is one point twenty five to one point five to to five. <laughs> so we, we we discourage that because yeah. uh, if it's the fare, uh, traverse fare, that's the only thing that should be charged to to. Uh, to the commuters. Another thing, in terms of sustainability for our partners and peers, um, instead of charging them 25 or 20 percent, we only charge them 10 percent. Ah. So it's it's actually a big big help to yeah. our partners. Now, Republic Act uh, 8794, better known as the Motor Vehicles or Users Tax. 
uh, there's a proposal to increase it. What could you say about that? Uh, it's it's been effective in some countries like like Singapore, uh, depending on number of years of 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 uh, number of years old of your car. Uh, some some sort of of uh, tax is so it's staggered. Yes, yeah, staggered, and every time the 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 year. Um, additional year came up, uh, it will add an additional tax. Uh, because um, uh, right now the road user's tax is really, it's not that high, it's quite low right now. Now there are several proposals, either reducing the number of years to be used, let's say 10 years, or after 10 years you cannot use it anymore in Metro Manila, you could use it only in the provinces. How, how could in, you say in, about in that? Terms of, in terms of security or usability of the car, um, definitely 10 years to the max is, is, is an average uh, lifetime of, lifetime of, of cars. The car. yeah. um, again, as I mentioned, in other countries, you would see that uh, in, in the road, there's, uh, there's only uh, five years or less, uh, uh, so less, than, the... less, than, less than five years. And unfortunately, Philippines is... is um, is one of the countries accepting those scrap cars? Uh, yeah, scraps yeah. are so we, many. We all, not, we all know that you can easily <laughs> you can easily find um, Japan surplus mm -hmm. uh, motor that uh, Filipino alam mo Filipino they normally they they normally uh, assemble yeah. from scratch yeah. <laughs> and we are good on that one. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, there's also a proposal to increase this excise tax on luxury vehicles. Luxury is luxury. So, yeah, luxury uh, <laughs> so um, normally those people that can afford that are, are so the ones okay. that can, can afford luxury. Mm -hmm. And in terms of tax, if, if it's really needed, then it's then okay. It's okay. Uh, I, you also mentioned that uh, you started, you stayed in Singapore for 15 years. Now, uh, what are the road systems that are being used in Singapore, like the implementation of the certificate of entitlement? Uh, in Singapore, um, normally Singaporean or car owners, basically, uh, before they buy cars, they need to, to get a certificate of entitlement. Uh, in, in, in Singapore, normally it's via bidding. Um, so there's, there's a certain quota that, that government allows for a certain year that, that car owners can, 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 go those, can get those Do you think this could solve the problem here in Metro Manila? If we implement this in the Philippines, if we're gonna go forwards, uh, forward on that direction, uh, the objective of that is to control uh, traffic yeah. problems, and it's been effective in Singapore. Um, but if we're gonna implement that in Philippines, ideally, before we implement that, uh, we need to we need to prepare a lot of things like um, better transportation option, yeah, yeah. Uh, better uh, infrastructure roads yeah. uh, of course there would be lots of opposition once this is implemented because i think the certificate of entitlement is even much expensive than the car itself <laughs> uh in singapore yes uh it's actually goes up to three times what, three uh, times the cost of the car yes oh, wow yes. and we're lucky because in philippines mm. uh even the cost of car is not that expensive uh, yeah yeah how about the electronic road pricing system ERP. Yeah. <laughs> okay. um, ERP system has been again. It's been effective in Singapore and in other countries and countries like like uh, London. Um, that's the their way to uh, minimize traffic, especially on the metropolis or uh, central business district. So uh, actually, every time you pass through that area, you have to pay. It's it's like a toll, uh, uh, like but it. but there's no there's no uh, bar. No bar. Um, uh, once once the car passed through the gantry, it will automatically detect whatever defined uh, toll charges. Now, if you don't have that, you can pass through that uh, area. If you don't have that, normally you will be charged uh, more, uh, more ah. because of the penalty. Ah. Every, every, every uh, unit that are installed in the car are registered in the system. So it's just like passing through a toll gate, like uh, the South Expressway, uh, A-Pass, it's just like that. Something similar. Only yeah, no it's, bar. It's something similar to that, but much, much, much better. Uh, what could you say about this uh, ride-sharing scheme could be implemented during the NCR? 
um, currently we are already implementing it, not only UHA but that other, other uh, TNC accredited companies. Um, when my views in ride sharing is yeah. really the, the solution for traffic because um, if, if you are a car owners and you can ride share with other car owners, it, it is much better. It actually reduces a number of cars. Number in the of road. cars. Yeah. Uh, how about this ad event scheme that has been, I think, implemented here in Pasig? Uh, I think there are other solutions that can can be implemented. So maybe they will just buy another new car. It's that, even it's actually doesn't. <laughs> it would so, even yeah. add on to the number yeah, of cars. It, it, it actually doesn't doesn't solve the problem. Again, uh, to support uh, traffic congestion, uh, to solve traffic congestion, instead of implementing ad even, I rather uh, I rather suggest uh, to have a better transportation option, and one of them is uh, ride sharing. By adopting proven technology solutions from advanced economies and integrating them to our existing transport environment is the best option we have. As traffic volumes continues to grow in the coming decades, the public sector will need to consider every possible opportunity to better manage all transportation systems and infrastructures. Let us help build our nation. Give your share by paying your taxes correctly and promptly for a better tomorrow. Once again, I am Dr. Victor B. Andriga, and this is Tax TV, a taxpayer's guide to Philippine taxation. Thank you for watching. For comments, questions, and suggestions on our topic today, you may email us at taxTVPH at gmail.com and Dr. Victor Indriga will gladly answer your queries.